It's Audi's fastest convertible ever. Audi unveiled the R8 Spider V10 Plus more than a month ago with a Hulk-like optional micrometer green paint and now the drop-top supercar is making its debut in the metal in a red hot shade at the Audi Forum in Allstadt in Germany. You are looking at the company's most expensive car on sale today, which in its homeland Germany begins from an eye-watering €207,500 or €17,500 more than the equivalent coupe. As a side note, the electric R8 e-tron priced at a whopping €1,000,000 Euros used to be the priciest four-ring car, but that was discontinued a while ago after fewer than 100 cars sold. You might also like Audi R8 Spider V10 Plus is brand's fastest convertible ever made. Audi R8 Spider V10 Plus ad might make you dizzy. This particular R8 Spider V10 Plus finished in dynamite red is actually more expensive than the base model as it has a few extra goodies, like the glossy black 20 inch wheels, 1500 euros, and the laser LED headlights, 3380 euros, just to name a few. Like all R8 Plus models, it uses a naturally aspirated 5.2-liter V10 engine dialed to 610 horsepower, 449 kilowatts, and 413 pound-feet, 560 newton meters, of torque for a 0 to 62 miles per hour, 0 to 100 kilometers per hour run in 3.3 seconds and a top speed of 204 miles per hour 328 kilometers per hour dot audi will commence customer deliveries towards the end of summer in europe and it will likely bring it to the us for those willing to pay the premium over the regular 177,100 dollars r8 spider the only model that could dethrone the R8 Spider V10 Plus in terms of pricing would have to be the hypercar Audi Sport briefly talked about earlier this year. However, for the moment it's only a good idea, and even if approved for production, it will take a while to come to fruition. Meanwhile, the range of high-performance Audis will be expanded with at least a couple of R's batched SUVs. time for the car is about 12 months now. During the first six months of this year, 
Acura has managed to deliver 278 examples of the NSX in the United States, according to statistics from car sales base. This number represents a strong increase over last year's sales, when a total of 269 units were handed to customers. Apparently, the NSX is a sales hit across the Atlantic Ocean as well, as Honda has just announced it has sold its full allocation of 100 NSXs in the United Kingdom for only 12 months. The Japanese manufacturer will sell additional 50 examples of the sports car in the country with customers putting order today expected to receive their cars in mid-2018 onwards. Simply said, the waiting time for the car is about 12 months now the NSX represents both the pinnacle of engineering for Honda when it comes to road cars and also continues the heritage of Honda's original NSX supercar produced between 1990 and 2005, which makes it all the more sought after, Dave Hodgetts, managing director at Honda UK, commented. The confirmation of this fresh allocation to arrive in the UK next year will allow the die-hard fans that haven't been able to get their hands on the latest NSX to finally get their wish. Priced at just under £150,000, approximately $192,345 at the current exchange rates, the Ohio-produced NSX is available at two Honda dealerships in Britain. First customer deliveries in Europe are expected in autumn this year and the brand has already confirmed the continent will be the leading exporting market for the model. Honda might spice things up with an even hotter version of the model, as a possible prototype of it was recently caught testing on the Nürburgring in Germany. Rumors suggest the Japanese company might ditch the electric motors and boost the turbos of the 3.5-liter gas unit, seeking lower curb weight and similar power output. The title really says it all. With 621 horsepower at its disposal, the 2017 Mercedes AMG S65 Cabriolet is anything but down on power, yet Brabus has decided to try and take the bitter Bo V12 engine to a whole new level. That it most certainly did by tweaking the handcrafted engine to extract an additional 267 HP for a grand total of 888 HP. 662 kilowatts, available from 5,500 rpm. Torque is also up from the series 738 pound-feet, 1,000 newton meters, to a mountain moving 1,106 lbft, 1,500 nm, at 4,200 rpm. However, it had to be electronically capped to 885 lbft, 1,200 nm. To preserve reliability. Such a substantial power hike takes more than just a software revision as Brabus had to bump the engine's displacement from 6.0 to 6.3 liters and enlarge the cylinder bores. In addition, bespoke exhaust manifolds had to be developed and larger turbochargers were installed, too. Cooling was improved as well to match the uprated engine, which now benefits from a new control system to make all the changes work together in the most efficient way while retaining the smoothness you would expect from a V12. The title really says it all. With 621 horsepower at its disposal, the 2017 Mercedes AMG S65 Cabriolet is anything but down on power, yet Brabus has decided to try and take the bitter Bo V12 engine to a whole new level. That it most certainly did by tweaking the handcrafted engine to extract an additional 267 HP for a grand total of 888 HP, 662 kilowatts, available from 5,500 RPM. Torque is also up from the series 738 pound-feet, 1,000 newton meters, 
to a mountain moving 1,106 lbft, 1,500 nm, at 4,200 rpm. However, it had to be electronically capped to 885 lbft, 1,200 nm, to preserve reliability. Such a substantial power hike takes more than just a software revision as Brabus had to bump the engine's displacement from 6.0 to 6.3 liters and enlarge the cylinder bores. In addition, bespoke exhaust manifolds had to be developed and larger turbochargers were installed, too. Cooling was improved as well to match the uprated engine, which now benefits from a new control system to make all the changes work together in the most efficient way while retaining the smoothness you would expect from a V12. Aside from overhauling the V12 engine, Probus also fiddled with the S65 Cabrio's design by developing a subtle aerodynamic body kit, though the car itself is certainly a sight to behold. It's being shown with a 21-inch set of wheels wrapped in low-profile tires, but even bigger 22-inch alloys are available as a king-sized option. A lowering module will bring the ultimate four-seat cabrio closer to the road by approximately 0.6 inches, 15 millimeters, for some extra visual impact. Aside from overhauling the V12 engine, Brabus also fiddled with the S65 cabrio's design by developing a subtle aerodynamic body kit, though the car itself is certainly a sight to behold. It's being shown with a 21-inch set of wheels wrapped in low-profile tires, but even bigger 22-inch alloys are available as a king-sized option. A lowering module will bring the ultimate four-seat cabrio closer to the road by approximately 0.6 inches, 15 millimeters, for some extra visual impact. Driving the quickest production pony car the world has ever known. Oliver, British Columbia, Canada. From the outside, the 2018 Chevrolet Camaro ZL11LE is a caricature of what a performance car should be. As the hardcore track day version of the not at all timid Camaro ZL1, the ZL11LE's rear wing might as well double as an ironing board, and the hyper aggressive dive planes in front would be right at home on a nuclear submarine. Anyone driving something in the ZL11LES crosshairs, however, from the Shelby GT350R to Porsches with similarly protracted alphanumeric names, would be foolish to dismiss the Camaro as a superficial plaything for those with an extra $69,995 in their bank accounts. Everything new on this car, both what's visible, and especially what isn't, is there to turn it into a precision instrument on the racetrack. Around a road course, the ZL11LE stands alone as the quickest pony car ever put into production, a claim to which its 716 lap time around the Nürburgring attests. Simply put, this is the best of the breed, and it's not even close. ZL1 of course, is the option code for an all-singing, all-dancing, 650 horsepower, 650 pound-feet supercharged V8, complete with all the trimmings, much like SS denotes. Area 27 takes its name from the Ferrari racing number synonymous with Canadian F1 legend Gilles Villeneuve. Carved into a hilly wine valley in rural British Columbia, it's a highly technical track filled with blind corners, double apexes, tight hairpins, and fast sweepers at the end of even faster straights. And Chevrolet's team has lined it with one LES. Turn 5 here is a tight left-hand corner that's the second half of a double apex complex, and you crest a hill while you're still steering. As I approach, I lightly tap the brake with my left foot just a bit later than the Camaro I'm chasing, a 455 HP SS1 LE piloted by a professional Canadian racer. I trail off the slow pedal as I turn in. The car rotates with a finesse more commonly associated with a svelte Miata than a 3,820 pound behemoth, and I'm able to get on the throttle earlier than the other guy. And then I have to back off, 
lest I risk shoving those red October-sized dive planes right up his tailpipe. Turn 6 is a high-speed, uphill, right-hand sweeper that leads immediately into a heavy braking zone. I again lightly squeeze the brake pedal to transfer just a touch. For the ZL11LE, Multimatics engineers developed their own strut housing. The new aluminum bits not only save over 18 pounds from the front of the car, helping to offset the additional weight of the supercharger, they're stronger, too. Adding to that rigidity, the subframes use hard mounts, rather than squishy rubber bushings that tend to deform under heavy use. In layman's terms, the suspension geometry remains consistent, so the handling is predictable at any speed. The car inspires the confidence needed to push the envelope whether the speedometer reads 20 miles per hour or 120 miles per hour. Much of the suspension is adjustable, allowing knowledgeable owners to adjust the setup to their driving style or home track. For those new to the black art of suspension adjustment, Chevrolet will provide a cheat sheet to help understand all the permutations. The ride height is variable by up to 10 mm to enable balance adjustments. The rear stabilizer bar is adjustable to allow further fine tuning. To better take advantage of the barely.legal, ZL11LE specific tires, Engineers added easily adjustable camber plates to this Camaro, too. At a fundamental level, all of this means that the front end grips the pavement in a way in. Slowing from north of 135 miles per hour to around 90 miles per hour for the long, fast turn 2 sweeper, everything comes together for the ZL11LE. The tires talk directly to the driver, without rubber bushings muting their feedback. Push too hard, and they're sticky enough to save you and compensate for your ham-fistedness, but they tell you via a subtle scrubbing sensation if you're trying too hard. Back off ever so slightly, and they sing a melodious note as they settle into their sweet spot. Driving the ZL11LE is truly a dance, to be fast one needs only to pay attention to what the tires are telling you, and lightly manipulate the throttle accordingly. The ZL11LE is more than just a heavy American pony car with prodigious power. This is a legitimate track day superstar with more than enough engineering pedigree to satisfy even the most dedicated enthusiast. At the same time, though, its race track demeanor is so user-friendly that GM can sell it to a novice driver without fear of immediate recrimination. This is a car that can bludgeon lesser cars into submission even at the hands of an unskilled driver. For the experienced track addict, though, it's a nuanced. most thrilling sedans around Detroit Michigan buying a Subaru WRX T does not turn you into a rally driver any more than wearing a spider-man costume makes you able to climb walls yet with its heroic performance and high levels of feedback the ST makes every drive feel rally car epic a strong performer and exhilarating at all times the ST remains one of the most exciting sedans you can buy today pros go go go. The Steez engine makes you work for its power, with peak torque not delivered until 4000 rpm. Once the turbo boost hits, it's a frenzied punch that'll have you grabbing the next gear before you know it. Work the 6-speed manual super tight shift pattern to keep revs up, and the Steez makes swifter progress than its just 305 horsepower output might suggest. From its grumpy rumbling at idle to its racy snarl as revs build, the turbocharged 2.5-liter flat 4 sounds the part, too. Turn, turn, turn. Unlike the standard WRX, and pretty much every other modern car, the ST still uses hydraulic power steering rather than electric. 
that works hand in hand with the car's aggressive suspension to transmit a constant string of feedback about the front wheel's grip levels to the driver's fingertips. It's invigorating as I take full advantage of the sticky Yokohama Advance Sport V105 rubber. Improved brakes. Notice those neon yellow brake calipers? This year's STI benefits from redesigned Brembo brake calipers and larger rotors. Specifically, the front brakes now have six piston calipers versus four, around rotors that have grown by 0.6 inch in diameter. In back, the rotor size has increased 0.4 inch. I've never had issues with prior STI braking performance on street or circuit, but it's always great to see automakers adding more stopping power to their performance models. Subaru also says the new calipers are stiffer, which no doubt contributes to the car's reassuringly firm and precise pedal feel. Plenty practical. There may not be a hatchback variant anymore, but this STI sedan still offers up a lot of utility. The trunk has a big opening and will accommodate 12.0 cubic feet of stuff, with the rear seats easily folding to improve storage space. This year the car also receives new built-in mounts for roof racks in case you need to transport even more gear. Cons. The regular WRX is also great. Compared to the WRX, the STI versions rides more stiffly, drones more loudly, has more turbo lag in everyday use, and costs more money. Maybe I'm just getting older, but it feels a tad more intense than I'd want from my daily driver. Unless you plan to visit a racetrack or rally cross course regularly, you'll likely find the standard WRX a better option because it delivers nearly all the fun of an STI with fewer downsides. Touchy. With a grabby clutch take up and sharp throttle tip in, it takes some mental adjustment to drive this car smoothly at low speeds. Leave the drive mode selector in its default intelligent option, as the Sport and Sport Sharp boost the throttle response curve to an even sillier level of eagerness. That wing. I'm all in favor of aggressive styling on performance cars, especially if it helps with aerodynamic performance. But the STI's rear wing is so large and so silly it may as well have a sticker saying, pull me over now, or maybe one that says, don't give this guy your phone number. A wing delete option is, of course, available from the factory. Competitors. Ford Focus R's. Honda Civic Type R. Volkswagen Golf R.